Hey YouTube, it's Tammy here. Um, this is probably take three of trying to make this video. Um, I live right on the river at this point and um, I opened the door up a while ago and let my dog out and uh, let the bugs in. So they've been flying around. I've been trying to chase them down. So if you see them flying around, hey, that's just Tammy <laughs> where she lives. So uh, I want to make this video uh, for one, to kind of let people know what's been going on in my life. Um, it's been, it's been, it's been a hell. Uh, but I made, I made it. I, and I'm here. And I want to inspire people to know that, that you can make it too. With all the stuff going on in the world right now, the coronavirus, the being locked in, it intensifies things. And it can really put you in a bad spot if you don't get a hold of it. And I, I had to. I had to get a hold of my emotions, uh, what was going on with me, um, and other people in my life. So, uh, here we go. Uh, of course, guys, you know I have new for bromatosis for you guys that maybe haven't, haven't watched my other videos. Um, my good looks here. But you know what? It makes me who I am. Real quick, I want to give a shout out to Susan Ludeen. Girl, I love you. You have been my rock through this, and I know you're watching. I want to hear from you down below. So real quick, I would love for you to subscribe. I try to remember all the buttons down below. There's uh, the subscribe button. There's the bell button. There's the like button. There's the comment section. You guys probably uh, know a little bit more about this than I do. And if I forgot something, please feel free to, to tell me what I forgot. And I'll try to make sure to put it on the next video. And I'm going to try to make videos every day, at least every other day, and kind of give you guys an update. I want to do some reviews. I want to, I want to get back to Tammy. <clears throat> but so let's talk about what's been going on. So I was diagnosed with cancer. And I'll kind of get into that here in just a second. Um, I was going through a divorce. My husband asked me for a divorce back in, in August. And this is where the tragedy starts. And uh, I loved, loved my husband. Still love him. Things are different. And maybe some of you women know what I'm talking about. Uh, trying to make a marriage work. But we went actually all the way to the last signature of getting a divorce. While I was going through when I'm going through with cancer. So everything was good. Um, in August last year, he wanted a divorce. I'm not going to really go into all the details. I moved out. I found a place um, that I rented from a guy who's upstairs in the country, where, just where I wanted to be. And things were going good. I was thinking about, you know, maybe eventually getting my own place and buying something and, and just getting on with my life. And relationships was the last thing on my mind, believe me. But it wasn't my husband's. And I didn't know that until almost up to I had my uh, surgery for my cancer. So I uh, moved out. Things going good. I had started having these stomach pains. And him and I are on, on decent terms. You know, we're still trying to do these divorce papers. I can't get a hold of him very often. You know, he's off doing his own thing. Wants a divorce, you know, wants to go and sow his, his oats, I guess. Well, started having these pains one night, and it was bad. And I asked the guy that I was renting the place from, can you take me to the hospital? Because there was no way I could drive. I didn't know what was going on. I had had the pains in the past and been this misdiagnosed, so it went on for about three years. <laughs> so I got to the hospital, and I, at this point, I am in tears. My blood pressure's through the roof. They got me in the back. They're already getting me set up for a CAT scan, and I'm calling my husband. Can you please come up here and be with me? I don't know what's going on, but I know I'm in a lot of pain. And he didn't really ever hear me cry like that, especially pain. I'm pretty tolerant, pretty tough old girl, but this was bad. So he came up. Got out of the, finally got out of the CAT scan. They're jacking me up with morphine. Said I had a pancreatic attack. And I was like, okay, so what do we do? And he says, well, it isn't 
just the pancreatic attack. He says there's something that causes it. And he says we're seeing a blockage. And I'm not really clicking to what he's talking about, but um, about two days after I got out of the hospital, I finally pulled up my CAT scan results, and they had actually set me up to go see um, a gastrologist. And they called me, set it up, said you need to go see them this day. I didn't have to do that. They did it for me. <clears throat> so I pull up my CAT scan on, on my chart. A lot of people may know about that. And there it is. It's put out that it's a possible mass blockage. Um, they wanted a biopsy suggested. So they set me up for a biopsy. It was so far back deep they couldn't get the biopsy. So I spent like $700 for nothing. And then finally they did another CAT scan and my bilary tree was five, six times bigger than what it's supposed to. My gallbladder was ready to blow because everything was backing up. And they said, we're going to set you up for surgery. You're going to have to have a Whipple procedure. <laughs> we'll go through that here in a little bit. But, um, went home, you know, all this stuff is sinking in. And I, about two days later, I called my husband. And, um, it's, it really hit me that night. Oh my God, I probably got cancer. This is probably not good. This, this Whipple procedure, I looked it up and this is a serious surgery. And it's only done for pancreatic cancer. So I called him up and I finally got a hold of him. And I, he seemed concerned. And I asked him, I said, I need to know, will you please be there for me? through this. If this is terminal, I need someone to make decisions for me. I need someone to be there for this surgery. I, I need someone. I need you. Will you please be there for me? And he agreed. He said, yeah, yeah, I, I'll, I'll do that. He says, As a matter of fact, I'll come over right now. You, you okay? Do you need anything? I said, I need you. Please come. So he came and seen me. He spent probably three nights with me. It was so nice to have my husband there and laying in the bed beside me. And about three days later, we're on the phone, and I'm thinking, maybe this divorce thing we don't need to do. And I asked him, I said, do you really want this divorce? I said, you know, right now we, we need each other more than ever. I need you more than ever. And I don't want to have to think about a divorce and what I've got to do with a divorce while I'm going through this. And I said, we've had such great, we've made great love, all that. And um, he said, no, I still want this divorce. And it crushed me. I was like, well, what about the sex? You know, what about, you know, you, you coming over here? And, and he had the nerve to tell me that that was him fulfilling his needs, that he had needs, and that he was sorry if I took it the wrong way. You tell you what, I come unglued. Of course, you know, after I told him off and told him he, he wasn't going to sleep in my bed ever again, but I still need you to be by my side. I need someone to make decisions for me. He agreed. He says, I'll still be there for you. I, I know you need me. It wasn't two days later. I can't get a hold of him. He's not answering his phone. He won't answer his text messages. About a week later, I start having these pains again, and I go up to see my my, um, my gastrologist, and she says, you know, everything's backed up so bad. She says, your gallbladder is so enlarged from all the, the bile and all that stuff backing up. She says, we may have to put you in emergency surgery. Well, <laughs> I'm calling him. Please come and, uh, and be with me. Please come be with me. They're wanting to put me in emergency surgery. And he would not come. He would not come. And I begged them, please do not make me have surgery right now. I don't have anybody to come and be with me. And they said, okay, we're, we're not going to do it right now, but we're, the, the uh, Whipple procedure is going to happen quick. I go home. 
I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make plans. I can't be in this place where I'm at. I need to get my own place, some place where I can have some peace and quiet. I can recover from surgery. So I rented this place on the river, and it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. The day I moved in, he shows up. He sits down. He says, I need to talk to you. And I said, all right. He said, um, then I had, I'd ask him, are you seeing someone? Can't answer your phone. What's going on? Oh, no, no, I'm not seeing no one. I promise you, you know, I'm not seeing anyone. Bullshit. He sit down there on, that, on my couch and said, uh, I need to tell you something. He says, um, you remember you asked me if I was seeing anyone? And I said, yeah, and you said no. He said, well, I have been. I said, well, for how long? He's like, oh, just a, just a couple of weeks. You know, we went out a couple of times. Come to find out that was a huge lie, too. He says, but I'm still going to be here for you. I'm like, Reed, will you please pick up your phone? You know, this girl you're with or dating or whatever, which it was breaking my heart, and I was trying to not show that it was breaking my heart. I said, you know, whatever you're having with her, she needs to understand that you're still my husband and we are not fully divorced. And I said, and you need to understand that too. You made a promise to me. Let me tell you, from that day forward, I had two weeks before I needed to have my surgery. He would not pick up the phone. He would not call me anything. I would call him. I would text him. I would beg him. I mean, begged him to come and see me, to talk to me. I needed somebody because I had no one. Finally, about three or four days before I had my surgery, I said, you know what? I know people who care about me, and I know some guys who care about me. I know one in particular who cares about me, and I call him up, and I spill my guts. My soon-to-be husband has abandoned me. During my most time that I need him, he won't answer the phone. He won't talk to me. He won't come see me. He won't acknowledge me. And my friend said, I'm on my way. I'm going to come see you. He came that night, sit down, talked to me. Yeah, I mean, no sex or anything like that. But it was so nice to have someone hold me and tell me that, hey, listen, if he ain't going to be there for you, I will. And it made me feel good. The next day, I call up my husband to say, hey, I need you to come over here tomorrow. If you're going to be here for this surgery, I've got papers that you've got to sign before I can go to the hospital. And I said, by the way, I'm seeing someone too. I said, it ain't serious, but it's someone who cares and wants to be here for me. This is the narcissist in him. This is where you get, you people want to talk about, you see all these videos about um, the stages of a narcissist? Here's, here is a good one. He says, you're, going, you're seeing someone? And I said, yeah. I said, Reed, I need someone too. And you could hear the disappointment in his voice. The next morning, he called me. He says, hey, I need to go and get some jeans or some shit like that. You want to take a ride with me? Yeah, sure, I will. Because I need you to sign these damn papers. So he shows up, and immediately it's, I'm sorry, I love you. I made a mistake. I want to be here for you. Please forgive me. You know, he's already slept with this woman. Come to find out two, three weeks after I had my surgery, I went through his phone one night when he was drunk and found all the text messages. And he'd been seeing her since back in, in November, I'm sorry, uh, September. Two weeks, three weeks after we had separated. So when he was over there sleeping with me, he was sleeping with her as well. That hurt me. And so I had I tried, tried to get past that. But, um... This has probably been one of the most tragic things that's ever happened to me in my life. I am 46 years old now. And um, I'm sure there's probably a lot of women out there at my age, too, that's gone through this or have had cancer and had their husband or somebody walk out on them. And that is a, a hard blow to take. 
I don't care who you are. But anyway, guys, I, I, I would love your support. Um, I, I, I want to start vlogging. I want to start getting back to Tammy. I'm, I'm I pretty much have healed up. I'm back to work. And I want to get back to me. Doing things that I, I, I enjoy do, doing. Can't talk. Making videos. Talking about some bullshit. That's what I want to do. And I want you to take this journey with me. I'm sorry I didn't um, record the journey that I went on. But it was just um, too tragic for me. I thought about it, but I couldn't. Anyway, guys, uh, that's my story. And I just uh, wanted to share that with you. And uh, like I said, I have neurofibromatosis. And um, if anybody's ever thought about going through something tragic, put on my shoes and, and walk in my world for one day. But I tell you what, it makes you appreciate who you are and um, how much you value your life, especially having something like I have already. Um, going through the cancer and and I don't say that I'm out of the woods yet but I'm, I'm there I think they found another mass on my kidneys and um, with the coronavirus and stuff I really hadn't been able to go and get checkups and I am and I'll keep you guys updated on that as well but um, I don't want to bore you I don't want to ramble but I love you guys I know I got a little crowd and I'd love a bigger one and I would love to hear what you think, suggest things that I do, <laughs> or one of my first videos, suggest things that I don't do, because I can be pretty vocal, and um, my husband is, is staying at his house, I stay at mine, we see each other, we're one signature away from a divorce, and we put the papers up for now, we're working through things, I'm still having a hard time, because I found out a lot of things that he straight faced lied to me about and I never thought my husband when I first met him could look me in the eye and lie to me. Let me tell you they can. I ain't telling you not to trust you man but I'm telling you a man can look you in the eyes at your most vulnerable moment and lie straight to your face. Anyway with that being said I'm not going to bash the men. It's just it's been hard. I still love my husband. I love you guys and I look forward to my next video. You guys have a safe evening. Um, take care. Um, I've got my um, thoughts on the coronavirus and I've been very political lately so you may see some shit about that as well. But until next time, you guys have a wonderful evening. Bye.